Hey, K47 here, and I wanted to show you guys how I made my homemade selfie stick here. I was over at my local bounce house, and you can probably see this one I got off Amazon is warped. I had simply jumped on it with my foam pad and the trampoline that got pinched in between the two, and I was really disappointed how easily this bent. Now, I can collapse it still. It's not totally useless, but the fact that it was $8 and I have maybe $3.50 or 4 bucks in this makes me a little upset because I've wrapped this one around a tree three or four times this past season while filming. And this one here, this is the first time anything bad has happened to it. And the fact that it was two soft objects that bent something was rather weak construction in my mind. All you need for this build is a volunteer ski pole. I prefer kids ones since they tend to get beat up fast or outgrown. They're easy to find at your local mountains lost and found or if you have a local shop that does rentals, you'd be able to go in there and maybe ask them at the beginning of the year if they have a set donated or anything that's given to them that they're about to throw out. If you could just salvage, that's pretty much what we're going for here. If you, as long as you can get that ski pole for free, you'll be within budget. And then I have a quarter inch by 20 thread count bolt, lock washer, regular washer, obviously the GoPro screw and the GoPro mount with the female thread attachment. This is the most expensive part of the build. I think I have a dollar and some change into this and everything else was actually just cents. Don't quote me on that. I will try to find the links on Amazon if I can. And as far as hardware that you're gonna need, obviously safety shades because we use tools, we aren't one. The power drill. And I went with a 7 30 seconds drill bit here because I like to have it just under the diameter of the threads so that way when you go to actually drill the hole and then put the th screw through it almost threads it for you and that keeps it a little more stable for the build. You're going to want a carbon cutter wheel of some type with a heavy duty cutting blade, a small wrench for when you get done building it and you're ready to put it together rather and then of course a grinder wheel which is actually more optional and the tool for changing them out I suppose then would be too. The last tool that you're gonna want is some kind of vise or clamp to actually pinch the end of the ski pole in to make that flat area to drill the hole through. But on my first one here I have these rough edges and on this next build, I plan to cut this off right where it's bent here. So I want it to be just a hair longer than the one I currently have. So I think I'm going to cut it off right here before it starts to bend, and then you won't even know that this pole was busted up before I started. Also, the lighter green color is really high vis on the mountain and much safer to be rolling down with. I did have one kid who tried to clothesline himself with my black stick <laughs> last season and I'm gonna avoid that this coming year by having the bright neon colored one. But check this out. This thing super tough. I'm not kidding when I say I wrapped it around a tree a couple times last season. I want to say at least two or three. Alright, so your first step is deciding how long you want it to be. Since this one is just under two feet and it's too short, and this one's just over two feet and it's too short, I'm gonna have this one go to two foot and eight inches. I believe this one is 2.4. I think the extra four inches will be just enough to really get the whole run in frame and not have my big head in the way. Already marked this where I want, so it's just a matter of removing it and trying to make it as flat as possible so I have less grinding. It might seem a little awkward that I'm doing this outside, but I'm saving myself a hell of a lot of cleanup by doing it this way. And now that you're done with your cutting attachment, you can switch to the grinding attachment and and just like that, we're ready to grind.
you see I'm left with a nice smooth edge here and it's hollow so it'll pinch super easy in my vise. So that other one that I made, I didn't put enough of a lip on it so that way the mount actually sat flush with the flat end. It got kind of caught there in that negative space or void that was made and the angle from it being bent down. This time I put it the whole way into my vise and I think that should be about enough room for the mount to sit flush. We will see. I can always pinch down a little bit more this time. Also, it's very important to make sure that the handle is completely perpendicular with the vise before you go to pinch this. Otherwise your wrist is gonna be at a weird angle trying to keep everything flat and you're gonna have to constantly be thinking about it and looking back at your camera or into the camera instead of down the mountain where you wanna go. And then it's as easy as squishing. Although it is high grade, in most cases Italian aluminum. My vice makes short work of it. So here you see. We pinch the end down nice and flush. And I'm gonna take my grinder to it again here, just to smooth everything out and remove any kind of slicing hazards or any burrs. And I know it doesn't look a whole lot different, but you can tell that I've ground this down a little bit here and it's considerably smoother to the touch. But most of it will be underneath the plastic ring. This is more or less just a safety precaution. So here, now we're ready to drill the hole. If you have a carbide bit or cobalt or another really hardened steel, that will help make this job a little faster. I don't, fortunately, this is just aluminum so we won't be here all day. And you know, this doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be pretty close to centered. Told you, we won't be here all day. Off camera, I cut the screw down because it was entirely too long. So now it's time for me to check if this lines up. And I'm lucky it does. As you can see here, there's just the tiniest amount of space there. And my lock washer and washer will fill that in no problem. So, Screw, lock washer, washer, and run up through the bottom. So after you got this started by hand, this is where you want the miniature wrench or pliers or whatever you just so happen to have. So you have to spin that around a few times. All right, and then after you get it threaded so it's just starting to pop out the other side, you can put your mount on and continue to tighten it. Honestly, I could probably go through here by hand for a little bit. There we go. Get the mount to where I feel like it's secure. And now I don't want to rotate the mount anymore because the aluminum will start to dig into the plastic of the mount. So I want to hold the mount still and really Pinch it with my hand. You see I'm actually going to loosen this up a little bit so I can really square this off. The tighter you go, the more it wants to get all in square. To get the final touches, I will pinch it, wrap my thumb around here and hold it with my hand, and then hold the rest of the pole in my arm. And that really gives me my firm mount, so if you're by yourself, you can just Snug it down, and that's it. Now I have another GoPro mount to add to my stash. Thanks for spending the past couple minutes with me on this build. I hope your sticks turned out as well as you anticipated. This is a shot for mine, and it's nice and wide, which is pretty much what I'm going for. It'll be able to capture my runs on the way down.